Shabbat Shalom. Uh, my next video today is uh, going to be about baptism. Uh, baptize or baptism comes from the Greek word uh, baptismo. Um, now, commonly in the Christian church, it is uh, understood that baptism is having a uh, body of water, in which case many um, church buildings they'll have like a what they call a baptism uh, baptismal pool. Um, and it's basically just a bathtub. <clears throat> and they'll fill it up with water and a person will step in. Uh, the pastor, and I've done this myself once in my life, um, where you basically have the person hold their nose um, and, you know, they, they hold it with their arm and they, they'll grab them and dunk them uh, under the water. Uh, it, you know, and baptism is, by definition, complete submersion uh, into the water. It's not the sprinkling or anything like that, which is you know, just a cop out. But anyways, um, that that is basically what is generally known as the um, uh, practice of baptism. And um, the reason we do it today, well, the reason Christians do it today, is because of Acts chapter two, um, which I am going to read. The um, now Acts chapter two took place on the uh, feast, the Moedim, known as. Shavuot in uh, in Greek it is known as uh, Pentecost. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead. This is after the Holy Spirit uh, came down on them like tongues of fire. <clears throat> now Shimon Kepha or Simon Peter, um, he gave um, he he told the people he started witnessing to them about the things and the occurrences of Yeshua at that time. And um, the uh, all the Jewish people there that were there for this feast, um, they uh, started to get really um, convicted of what had happened, and they, you know, the the scripture says that they were cut to the heart. They asked, verse thirty-seven of uh, Acts chapter two. Uh, now, when they heard, uh, they were. Uh, cut to the heart, and said to uh, Kepha and the rest of the apostles, or emissaries, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Uh, some some scriptures say, what do we have to do to be saved? Uh, or I should say some translations, um, or versions. Verse 38, Then Kepha said to them, Repent, which means to turn away from your sin, and back to the uh, original instructions of the Almighty. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh, or Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, uh, Christian churches look at that and they say, okay, uh, so uh, I need to get baptized. And, and it's, it's true, you know, um, uh, and it's not, to, you don't get baptized to become saved, that's not the point. Um, but... Let's look now at the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is mikvah. Um, and <clears throat> the, the Jews or the Hebrews, they understand uh, he, the mikvah to be a totally different thing than just basically being dunked. Uh, it's a totally different practice. And I am going to read to you guys <clears throat> from... I'm going to go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. Um, this is just before uh, where uh, Yahweh gave the first ten commandments to uh, the Hebrews. I want to read to you in verse 14. I don't need to read the whole context, but I'll explain it to you. Uh, verse 14, so Moshe, or Moses... Uh, so Moshe went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. Um, and he said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not come near uh, your wives in a sexual manner. Um, and then the third day came and all that kind of stuff. So he sanctified the people, which um, means to set apart. Um, and he. Uh, it also says they washed their clothes. Um... And basically, the practice, as we know it from uh, from a historical standpoint, is that what people would do for the feasts, and probably should still do, um, 
was that they would mikvah themselves. Now the practice of the mikvah is that, uh, and it often happened, uh, if not all the time, happened at the Jordan River or the Jordan River, Jordan. Um, what they would do, and this is also believed very strongly that this is exactly what Yohanan, um, um, the Baptist, I don't know how to say John the Baptist in Hebrew, um, Yohanan the Baptist um, instructed the people to do this. Uh, also, in his time, that what they would do is they would uh, they would wade out into the uh, Jordan River, uh, they would completely submerge themselves, they would spread apart their fingers, spread apart their toes, they would open their mouth a little bit, and they would let, since the Jordan River, it's a river, so the water is, uh, you know, going past them, it's flowing past them. Uh, and the idea was that they would go in, and the water would sweep across, uh, past them, and like dirt, everything, impurities, would be removed from them and be washed downstream. Whereas if you were in stagnant water, you're just, you know, if you take a bath, you're you're eventually just you know soaking in your own filthy water, uh, to be gross about it. But uh, the idea was that no, he wants you to be clean. Uh, and s there's so many spiritual applications that could come from this. Um, and and let, let, me, let me talk about what happened in Exodus first of all. Uh, now, I'll read to you in Acts chapter 2, uh, and this was the day of Shavuot. Shavuot is uh, a feast that came about because of what happened uh, at Mount Sinai um, right here. And uh, it's so, such a cool thing. I wish I could get into it right now, but I'm not going to because uh, me and my friend that we're doing the dual Bible study with, we're going to be getting into this soon, and I'm going to be sharing a lot about this, and so is he. So, anyways, basically, um, it's interesting to note that Shavuot came uh, about because of what happened here at Mount Sinai, the giving of the first ten commandments, uh, and so on. Um, and, and so here... Moshe told the people that they should mikvah and wash themselves and all that kind of stuff. In Acts chapter 2, Shimon Kepha told the people that they should mikvah themselves. Uh, and it's basically, get yourself clean, you know? Um, you... I don't have a river around here, but uh, I, I can... It, it's not so... It's not as sacred as they try to make it out in Christian churches, but it is, in a sense, too. But really, I can hop in the shower and I mikvah. Uh, it, it's because there's running water. Uh, it's the idea that you're washing away all of the impurities. Now, let's consider the spiritual application here. Um, if you're focused more on the Greek, Greek baptismo, you're focused more on somebody else dunking you in your, you know, your own stagnant, filthy water. Um, and it's, you know, letting someone else do the work for you. Uh, and that's what a lot of churches do. Remember, gr uh, Christian churches, they have that Greek, uh, Western Gentile mentality where they let the holy person or the pastor, uh, which is a biblical thing, a pastor is a biblical thing, but, um, uh, but we've kind of taken it out of context today. Um, you know, they, they rely on him to do all the studying uh, or all the really in-depth studying, and he's the one that, you know, rallies up the troops and gets them ready to, you know, do different things and everything, where... As if you t consider the Hebrew mikvah, you know, we are instructed. Remember, Mik Moshe would have instructed the people. He told them, do this, mikvah yourselves. There you go. So what the people do? They didn't wait for him to dunk them. They went into the water and they mikvahed. Uh, they became clean and they did as instructed. They didn't, you know, that, and that's... That, that's also the Hebrew mindset, too. Uh, I, I've said before, it, it is a, a form of worship to study, you know, to, to get your word. Uh, like, you know, on a, today, like uh, the Sabbath, uh, is a great day to just sit here and study your scriptures. And, and it's wonderful worship to the Almighty. And, it, it, you know, you learn, uh, you allow the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to counsel you and to lead you into all truth. And it, you know, and it's not to say that having teachers is a bad thing. That's a very biblical thing. But my point is that comparing to the Greek baptismo and the Hebrew mikvah, it's a, there's a a vast difference there between the two practices in and of themselves, but also the spiritual application. Whereas the Greek Gentile mentality, Western Gentile mentality, that they mostly, from my experience. 
from what I've seen, they rely on someone else to feed them. They rely on somebody else to get them going. Whereas the Hebrew mikvah, uh, the Hebrew point of view, they, they look at the instructions, that's what Torah means, instructions, and then they put it into practice. And they just do it themselves. Um, now, of course, the Holy Spirit, he's with you the entire time to help you. I believe Yeshua uh, sent his Holy Spirit as, as, you know, Scripture says the Holy Spirit is Yeshua's. The Holy Spirit is also belonging uh, unto Yahweh. Uh, but anyways, the, the point is that, you know, we have the help by the Holy Spirit. We can do these things that we are instructed to do. We don't have to wait on somebody else. That's why I started this channel on uh, YouTube. Uh, I was tired of waiting for someone to just say, hey, teach, you know, because I did used to speak at a school, um, I, I, spoke there, I spoke there a few times, uh, I'm not sure if I uh, might have said something to make them not <laughs> call me back or again, but, uh, no, nah, I talked to the guy, it's all cool, but, um, but no, the, um, the, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to just sit here and wait and all that kind of stuff, and, and I'll, I'm going to close with a statement that Francis Chan once uh, said, uh, one of my favorite Christian speakers, um, and, and bear in mind, no, I'm not, I don't call myself Christian, but, uh, you know, I do believe in listening to teachers. Not every teacher is going to tell you all the truth, you know, they don't know everything. Uh, people like, you know, Michael Rood, even he said that he doesn't agree with everything he says all the time. Um, that's why it's up to us to go back and study and make sure uh, what was said is right, but it's okay to listen to teachers. Anyways, uh, I was listening to Francis Chan one time, and he said an awesome statement, and it, it never left me. He said uh, that so many people are waiting for the voice of God to uh, tell them, you know, I'm just waiting on God, you know, to tell them what to do, and uh, where to go, and what ministry to do, and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, and so he stopped there and he said, okay, did God tell you to go home and watch TV? Then why did you do it? You know, it's it's so it's so elementary, but it's such a perfect statement, and it bears repeating. And you know that's why it's like, you know, sure I hope to teach somewhere one day uh, to an actual congregation that doesn't look like a camera lens, <laughs> but uh, you know I I could not have been more blessed than the other day when I received a comment from someone who said that, you know, one of my, one of the videos I posted helped them. So, you know, I thought, you know, I can, I have a camera, um, I have a Bible, I have a voice, I have a computer I can upload onto, well, let's do this. I'll do it for the Almighty and uh, I'm going to do it for the people too. And, um, you know, so far it's been pretty good. Um, not everyone agrees with what I say, but that's fine. You know, they can find themselves another teacher. I don't have a problem with that. But, uh, you know, it, it's just a matter of, you know, the scripture says what it says. I mean, Yeshua said, go into all the nations, you know, tell them the good news. That, it, that's what he said to do. My question is, why aren't you going and doing what he said? He said to do, go do it. Um, you don't have to wait on him to show up and, you know, have this brilliant transfiguration there and just ah here I am I command you go no he, he, he gave you his word obey it just do it don't wait on your pastor don't wait on your neighbor or your cousin or niece just do it do what you were instructed to do um, that I think is spiritual a good spiritual application of the Hebrew mikvah.